What's up guys, my name's Dean, or as most of you know me, Twisty, and it's time to take a look at one of the other finals this weekend. We've got the Western Bulldogs coming up against the West Coast Eagles at Patterson Stadium in Perth. So, this is a huge elimination final. This is Thursday night, this is the first of the finals, and it is going to be a big one, I can tell you that. I think... Um, you know, the Dogs, they've had a horrible year with injuries. And uh, you look at, you know, the West Coast Eagles, and uh, they've had a few injuries. Nick Nat going down with the ACL is obviously the, the biggest one uh, to name. But apart from really that, they've had, you know, a, a, a worse year than last year. It's been pretty average and things like that. And I'm not playing as either team, by the way. I'm just letting it run just to see... Uh, what the game thinks will happen. So, uh, basically, at the moment, you know, the Dogs, they had a few sort of injuries and they needed to push themselves up. And, and they had the depth pretty much to cover a uh, majority of their injuries. Uh, whether it gets to a stage in that final that, you know, those injuries can no longer be covered... Uh, we'll, you know, determine that then. I've got Super Goals on for whatever reason, but uh, I'm going to keep that there. Um, and, you know, the Dogs, they've done a really, really good job of, of covering, you know, those players that needed to be covered. You know, your Murphys, your Johannessons, um, and pretty much, and now Wallace goes down as well. Dalhouse was down for about six weeks at one stage as well. So they've had trouble with a number of players, but they have also, you know, done extremely well to get themselves into the position they're at. If I have a look at uh, where they finished up on the ladder, I mean, they finished seventh, just below the West Coast Eagles, who finished in the grand final last year. We might might uh, remember that one. But if we have a look at... Let's have a look. Where is this stat here? Players used. Now, we take a look at the ladder, and we look at which clubs have used the most players? Now, outside of the top eight, uh, the least amount of players used is 35 by Carlton and St Kilda, and the rest are uh, well over 37. So 37, uh, 38, 39, 40. Uh, pretty much using you know their whole list kind of thing, except for a couple of players. Richmond used the most players this season with 41 different players uh, for their season. And we look at inside the top eight, and only two sides have used more than 35. So, two out of ten in the bottom eight, or in the bottom ten, had used more than 35, and now two out of eight inside the top eight have used less. I mean, yeah, have used... Wait. Hang on, I got it the wrong way. <laughs> wrong way around. Uh, if you were out, You obviously use more players if you're outside the top eight. Uh, compared to those inside the top eight uh, who use a lot less and they had, you know, more consistent years with injuries, I guess. And we look at the Western Bulldogs. They've used the most players inside the top eight. They've used 39, which is more than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 clubs in the competition 14 if you count people who have also used 39. So they've been decimated with injuries and they have covered it extraordinarily well. You look at a side like the Adelaide Crows who finished in 5th but only used 29 players on their list. You know, that's only 7 players that have played a game this season that are going to miss out on the finals. So we're pretty certain of who Adelaide's probably best 22-23 players are if only 29 of those uh, players on the list actually got a game this season. So it's it's showing you sort of where clubs can dwindle and things like that. And you look at a team like North Melbourne, who, while it might have seemed like, you know, they've gone off the rocker, have they had too many injuries and things like that, they only used 34 players this year. So a club that didn't use a hell of a lot of players, but, you know, still managed to have a, a pretty, you know, dramatic downfall shows us that their depth isn't as good as, uh, you know, they would have liked it to be. Obviously, we all know, or we kind of knew that already. 
Uh, now the coach has sort of gotten rid of a few more players, so uh, it becomes even more obvious. But uh, that's just one of those key things where I think the dogs have done extraordinarily well to keep themselves in the hunt and uh, keep keep them going for this final series. And, and West Coast, they've used, used 35. So they've used a fair, fairly large amount as well of players. But uh, they've managed to you know get, get themselves into that home final position of sixth. Now, will that finals experience from last season you know, got them beating Hawthorne the first week of finals, got them beating North Melbourne, coming from behind in that preliminary final to win. Will that experience be the thing that drives them forward to maybe another preliminary final, maybe another grand final, possibly a flag from outside the top four? They're the informed team at the, of the comp at the moment, the Eagles. They've won the last four, and all four of them, I think, have been against top eight sides, or three of them have been against top eight sides, uh, but they have done extraordinarily well the back end of this season uh, to, you know, maintain uh, this really good format uh, that, you know, didn't work for them earlier in the season. They might have changed a few things and uh, got themselves back into a better position, which is most likely what they've done uh, to do that. And, you know, percentage is probably the biggest thing to look at, uh, apart from wins and losses just to see where a club really is at. So if we look, we see the Sydney Swans with the biggest percentage in the comp, 151. Geelong and GWS in the 130s for their percentage. So you'd say those three clubs are actually probably three of the biggest threats to the competition right now. Then Hawthorne is dwindling at, uh, I think, sixth, sixth on the ladder for percentage. Uh, with only 118%. Now, over the previous years, we've seen Hawthorne have 150, 160%. So when they are beating good teams, it's not by a hell of a lot. But the thing is, they are winning those close games. So if you come up against the Hawks in the finals, you've got to do what West Coast did last year and actually get rid of them um, early. Don't let them get within a close game kind of thing. So if we take a look at last year's finals week one and how West Coast actually won, they won by 32 points. They didn't just win, they won well. And if you let Hawthorne into the game, into a close game, it's going to make it extremely difficult for you to uh, get over the line. Oh, what a mark. What a mark by Kennedy. Anyway, I cannot wait for this game to come on uh, Thursday. Thursday night? Is that what it is? Yes, Thursday night. It's going to be an absolute beauty of a contest. And, you know, you look at the two sides and you say, well, you know, they've both... You'd say probably the Dogs have been the more consistent team over the year. Um, with, you know, West Coast having a very up-and-down season. And the Bulldogs rarely... I think they might have only dropped one, one game to a team they should have beaten. Um, but apart from that, they both these sides have been pretty damn good at, at beating those teams that they needed to beat. Uh, I think West Coast didn't lose a game to a side outside of the top eight, and all five or six of their losses came from sides within that top eight bracket, and obviously that's why they dropped down to sixth. Though if they did manage to, you know, beat a couple more of those, uh, they, they won their last three or their last four against top eight sides, but they did lose their first five. So... That's that's where the issue was for them early on in the year, but now that they've sort of recovered from that, it's uh, it's a wide open ball game as to what their season can do. Obviously, Nick Natanui is going to be a huge loss for them in this final series, but uh, it's going to be a close game. And look at this, even the game reckons it's going to be a close game. It's 14 apiece at half time. Wowee. The Eagles with a one-point lead in this uh, third quarter. Just the only behind of the term. The only scorer of the term as well. We've got Roughhead in a nice little ball to Dalhouse. And the Dogs moving it through the middle of the ground now. Not a hell of a lot of run, but some good kicking. Turning the ball over once again. This is Bontempelli getting the handball towards Wallace. He gets it towards Dalhouse. Dixon picked it up inside the forward 50. Ball is brought back. According to the umpire, didn't want to take the advantage. Dixon now inside the 50 to Stringer. And the package 
Jake Stringer can line up. Two minutes to go. They trail by one. They now lead by five with two minutes remaining in this third term. Just a quality uh, line up and kick the goal from Jakey Stringer. The Eagles have been dominating possession at the moment, but they just haven't been able to capitalise on the scoreboard. That's going to be critical for them in this final term. They need to make the most of their opportunities. Nat Nui out of there towards Marston, but it's picked up by the Dogs. Wellingham didn't get it. Boy towards Caleb Daniel. Sheed with a fist in there. He gets the tackle on Daniel. Hunter's going to be first to the ball. Hunter with a shot at goal. Hunter with the opening goal of the final term for the Dogs. Nat Nui out of the middle towards Shuey. He gets the kick away back towards Nat Nui. They're intercepted by the Dogs. McRae's in there. Nat Nui and Ruff head in there. Boyd and Marston also in there. Gaff picks it up. Handballs to Nick Nat. Long shot at goal from 60 towards Kennedy. Yo's back there as well. Morris picked it up and kicked it outside. Mark not taken by Roughhead on the half volley. Nat Nui finds Kennedy. They've had 20 out, no angle. And he can put him back within a five-point ball game. He's just snuck it in, Josh Kennedy. The Eagles, 3-3-21. The Dogs, 4-2-26. Tom Boyd giving the chop out in the ruck, but Nat knew he's going to be key here. Gets the ball down. Boyd handball towards Wallace. Wallace gets the kick away towards Dalhouse. Picks it up, left foot ball. It's a goal! And the Dogs get it back to an 11 point lead. So they keep that two goal distance. Nice pick up on the half volley. And on the left foot, just quality, quality shot at goal. Okay, back in the middle now. Boyd and that Nui. Boyd wins it out to there. Ball got to Bontempelli now. Inside the 50 towards Dalhouse. He just kicked one. Can he kick another? Similar position, but this is a set play on the right boot. A Dalhouse has got two in a row, and the Dogs are looking likely to pull off an upset here. Oh mm, boy. Anyway, we're back in the middle of the ground. 17-point Bulldogs lead, 10 minutes to go in this final term. Perinus got the tackle on. Handball from Shuey to Kennedy. Oh, a little kick to Kennedy, sorry. And he can line up. He knows there's not much time. They got three goals required. There's one of them. That Nui to Wellingham inside the 50 to Twanridge. And he can line up now for the Eagles to bring it back to just a five-point ball game. On the right boot, Tunbridge kicks the goal. And it is a five-point Bulldogs lead. 5-3-33 play the Dogs. 6-2-38 is the critical thing here. The centre clearance. Nat Nui to Wellingham. Wellingham little kick was smothered. But it still goes far enough to Gaff. Inside the 50. Kennedy one out as well as Darling and Yo. Yo put the tackle on. Now, oh, it was Kennedy. Yo picked it up. Left football. It's a go. Oh, oh boy. One team about to be eliminated from this one. Remember, the Dogs lost the elimination final last year by just seven points to the Adelaide Crows. They've been in this situation before. Is the same result going to happen? Out of the middle there. Nat Nui got a high tackle on. Bonte, him, or maybe it's Wallace gets himself a free. Kick went forward to Honeychurch. Hearn put the tackle on. Bont's got it now from nine point range. Just the one behind. I was Clay Smith. And why did it say bottom pally down the bottom? We've got a draw, ladies and gentlemen. The scores are tied with 2 minutes 52 on the clock. What is going to happen? We've got no extra time, might I add. It is just next score wins or we have a draw in this scenario. 2 minutes 12. Probably the Dogs, the only real team that can win it from here. Out of the stoppage. The Eagles go forward towards Tunbridge. Fisted away, Shuey towards Sheed, needs a mark inside 50, long ball, top of the goal square, it's going to be a draw, and not even the game can separate who's going to win this weekend, it is goal this Thursday night, it's going to be an elimination final that we cannot predict. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you all later.